Hello friends! Today I have some really bright and colorful photos to document and I thought what better opportunity to use this paper right here than with these bright photos. So I showed this paper to you in one of my unboxing videos. It is called Full of Life and it is full of color. It's a six by six pad. So I had to come up with a way to use it on a scrapbook layout where I didn't need larger pieces than six inches. So since this week, the creative design team is collaborating using sketches from our brand new sketchbook. I found a sketch that has all of these pieces in the back that are less than six inches. So I chose the patterns that I liked together for my photos. There's lots to choose from, and a lot of them are very busy, so I had to choose ones that looked good together, and I've already cut them and laid them out on my paper. So I am going with this sketch, and I have printed my photos accordingly, and I have already cut these pieces on my Cricut as well. So, over here on the left side, I'm gonna do a white background because I have so many bright colors. And I'm gonna do this as a white background too. I know this kind of just blends in here, but I'm also going to add this little element here. This is a Cricut cut, and I'm gonna cut this on my Cricut as well. But first I wanna decide what color to use. So these are the photos that I'm going to have over on this side. Look at how good they look with these photos or with these papers. It's like they were made for each other. So I have a bunch of the cardstock. Now all of these colors are in the Brights collection and the only way to get the 12 by 12 cardstock currently with Stampin' Up! is in a family pack where you get two of all of the family colors. So I got a few of those packs and these all happen to be in the Brights. So I wanted to try to decide what color I wanted to be around here. So I like that I want to be able to bring out the colors in the photos without them just kind of blending into the background. And I'm going to add another matte too, so we'll have to decide what color matte. I think the green might be a little too much because we do have so much green over here. But look at how perfect. This is Granny Apple Green. It's such a perfect match for these leaves. So I'll definitely have to bring that in in another way. I just don't want so much of it as that wreath. I don't really like this blue. It matches this really well, but there's not much of it down here. So I don't like that. And I think these are too bold, but they might work for a photo mat. So I think actually my best bet is this Coastal Cabana. I'm still getting to know all of these colors, <laughs> but that's Coastal Cabana. So let me go ahead and cut that on my Cricut. All right, so here is the coastal cabana and I like that look at how it brings that out it looks really pretty it does touch this which is a very similar color in a couple spots let me see if I turn that upside down it's kind of the same and I actually liked it this way better so I might rearrange this so that I have only one of these um, so we'll see but let's find a mat for this I've got Melon, Mambo, and Berry Burst. So I thought I'm wearing a pink shirt. There's some pink in here, and this might look good, and that does look good. But over here, these are a little more red, so I'm not sure I like the pink. And I do have a little bit of purple in those gorgeous orchids there. So I might be able to, I like that. I think I'm gonna mat these in that color. Okay, so off screen, I've brought in some black. I've cut these down and I wanted to show you how I gutted this. I just gutted a portion of the center out because it's not gonna be showing. Now the sketch calls for this paper to be butted up to the edge so that in your album, it looks like one continuous 12 by 24 piece. And so a lot of people will gut out this too. So they'll gut out like this. And what I found for me personally is that with without this section here and these ones just kind of flopping, it's harder to line them up. So I like to keep this bar here to sort of keep the shape of this square. And then that way I can just glue this down and line it up. And then it's not hard to 
line up correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get both of these down and I did rearrange these so I only have one turquoise down here and I think that looks better with the turquoise on it. All right, so there we go. So I'm not working on my Versa mat yet because I wanted you to see the black border, but I do want to bring in my Versa mats because that does really help me to stay in frame for you. And I like seeing all the measurements and everything on here. So I sure hope that Stampin' Up! carries something like this because I love the Versa mats. So you can see the effect of black because we have the black around here, but I know it's hard to see that. So um, another thing I was thinking is, so these are called for being just butted up to each other, but because again, I have such bright colors, I was thinking it might be nice to have just a very skinny white border around each one. Actually, these are supposed to be moved up a little bit. Um, just to give a little bit of break to your eye. And I do think that I like that. So I'm gonna cut these each down an eighth of an inch and cross my fingers that the math works out. That looks perfect, I love it. So let's bring our main piece back in. And I'm loving that. Okay, so I, I haven't glued anything down yet. I'm not quite ready to commit, but I want to work on the other side. Now I collaged a whole bunch of just flower images and they're basically detail shots. I forget what these guys are called, but they're like the squirrel or the raccoons of Mexico. <laughs> they were so funny. They were all over the place. Um, I think they're called Cody or something like that, but there were beautiful flowers everywhere. So I got some fun close-ups and I loved how these orchids were just like, they had them planted on the sides of the palm trees in this one area. It was just gorgeous. So I collaged those all onto a four by six. I'm just gonna leave them as a four by six and I have a whole tutorial on how to do this. I'll link that down below if you're wondering how to print smaller photos. And then I have these ones. I think I'm gonna put, I'm gonna swap those so he's walking into something. Um, just kind of around the resort. And then I'm gonna add some journaling here. So here's a box I can use for journaling that I cut to three by four. Now, if you look at the sketch, we've got a six by four photo up here. So I've just put this whole six by four up here. And then there's a six by four and a four by four, but we're kind of creating the same space by doing my two three by fours and my journaling. And I'm gonna just bump everything up because I didn't wanna have my journaling up there. I kinda like the look better of having everything bumped up a little bit and have journaling here. Um, and I didn't have another photo that I wanted to add here, so I thought I might as well just add my journaling there. And then we have our little spot for a cluster right here. Uh, um, you can use whatever embellishments you want. The sketches show you know, various flowers and stars and things like that, but replace them with whatever you want. I probably will be doing flowers, not these exact ones, because I have so many flowers on here and that just works with mine. Um, but feel free to replace it with, with whatever you want and with whatever size photos that you have. Since we have a lot of this aqua color over here, I do wanna bring it over here, but I don't really have aqua in these photos. It's over in these photos. So um, I think what I might do is bring them in in little sprigs and I'm trying to decide if I want to mat these photos in this same color. They look good with this. I'm not sure I'm gonna like it with this. Maybe this one I'll mat. No, I don't like it on that. I'll have to figure out what color to mat that on. Maybe black for this one. Because I have so many bright colors, I could do black for that. And then I can do this bright purple color berry burst for this and that could work but let me try something else I could do yellow we have a little yellow in that background I think that's too much yellow it kind of drowns out the leaves kind of get lost on there and then I have this one this is azure afternoon I feel like this kind of competes with this too much so I might leave it as black or black 
and have this as a very skinny double mat. That way it's not right up against the photos. I think I'm gonna try that out and see how that works. I've done a lot off screen here. I wanna talk you through it. I've glued down my background and I've decided on my photo mats and adhered all those. I did decide to go back to this aqua color, the Coastal Cabana for this mat. I just didn't like the purpley color with all the red and purples in here. It was just kind of drowning it out and there, were, there was just too much purple over here. And I like how this draws the cabana, Coastal Cabana over from this page too. I also switched up my journaling box. It was, I was gonna have it over like this, um, which I still might do, that could work. But I thought for now, I'm just going to separate the two purples and have the aqua in the middle. And just one little thing to note, it's not a huge deal, but I lined these up so that there's color peeking through both sides. You could have done, like I had it like this at first, um, and then it's white peeking through and color, and it's not a huge deal, but just a little detail. I just scooted them over and it makes them a little more centered anyway. So we have color behind both of those. So that is that page. And then over here, I had planned to use this die set. This is the Alphabet a la Mode, and I really love this set. Um, from Stampin' Up, I like that it's skinny, so you can fit a long title on your page but it just did not feel substantial enough for my title. So what I did is I, since I was cutting stuff out on my Cricut anyway, I decided to cut this out on my Cricut and I think I'm gonna actually put it down on the bottom. So let me move these out of the way and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'll scoot these up and then have this down here. And I like that since we do have so much color down here, it helps to break that up and it helps to kind of ground this side of the page. I'm really liking this. This um, font is called Milkshake. I got it from defonts.com and I have a whole video showing how to create your own title and create an offset and all of that. And I will link that down below. I considered doing some black splatters with my shimmer brush kind of behind here in a few places, but I decided I just don't need that going on because of all of the loud colors already. The white space is gonna be really nice um, to rest your eyes. So I moved on to embellishments and this is the floral ephemera. Now um, I thought, again, since we have so much color, it might be nice to use some black and white florals. You can color these with markers, colored pencils, watercolors, whatever you want, but I'm gonna try it out just black and white because I'm thinking that that's gonna be a nice contrast to all of the color we have going on. Now the sketch tells me I'm gonna have a cluster here, a small cluster here, and then a cluster here. So I'm just gonna kinda tuck these under and see what I think. There are quite a few styles here. I'm gonna kind of tuck that underneath the title too. I like it kind of overlapping this photo a little bit and tucked under the title. There are a few other ones here and I tried them off screen. I think that they just get a little bit lost. I liked um, these two the best and these pack come with two of each of them. There's this one also. So those are all the black and white options, but I do want a little bit of color. So what I've done is cut some sprigs. I've got the granny apple green and the coastal cabana. And then I even cut a little bit of the berry burst because who says you can't have berry burst sprigs? Those came from this textured floral stamp set and this is quickly becoming a favorite. What I love the most is that the die set, I just added the dies in here, comes with three standalone sprig dies. So one pass through the die cutting machine and you've got three cut and they're all really, really beautiful. So um, I could have also used the stamps to embellish, um, but I just decided to go with these black and white ones and if I end up not liking them, I might switch over but I thought that I would try out some of these little sprigs. Now over here, I just want a little bit of the Coastal Cabana because I already have a lot of it here in this wreath. And um, let's see, I'll move, put this one down here. I think I want more green up at the top too. So we'll stick that there. And then for my 
pop of color. I'm thinking I might do that, but I think I want this tucked under. I think I'm gonna like that better. Isn't that pretty? I really like that, and I think that's gonna give a nice pop. So with the leftover berry burst that I had after cutting my mats, I had enough scraps to cut four sprigs. So I've got one. I might add another one here because that's one of my big clusters, or I might add it here, so we'll see. But for now, I think I'm going to add one here so I can have at least one in each cluster. I'm gonna start speeding this up now because the embellishing process always takes me the longest, but I have the most fun with it. So one thing I forgot to point out earlier is that I did add very skinny black mats around all of my photos to help again ground them and kind of tone down those bright colors but I cut them just an eighth of an inch bigger than the mat smaller than it so there's only a sixteenth of an inch uh, sticking out of the black but I think that really helps to tie everything together especially since I have different matte colors. One thing that you can do with these sprigs is tear them into pieces to stretch them further. I'm gonna do that right here. Since I don't have as much of this purpley color, I do have another 12 by 12 sheet of this color, but I didn't wanna cut into that. So I'm just gonna make this work. And so this is helping me to really stretch that color further. I just wanted to have a little pop of this color and have it in a couple of areas of each cluster. It turns out that that's what I liked and I felt um, was more balanced is to have two pops of that color in each cluster. So if you've been following my channel for a little while, you may know that I'm working on this album from my trip to the Riviera Maya, Mexico. So that's what these pictures are from. We had just such a wonderful time. It was the incentive trip that Close to My Heart took us on for those of us who earned the trip. And the resort was just gorgeous. It was so picturesque. And I mean, this whole, the whole area of Mexico around Cancun and the Riviera Maya was gorgeous and so many bright colors. And so I think that I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this paper for some other layouts too. But I'm also excited to do the beachy type layouts because of the beach um, stamps and dies that I have from Stampin' Up! for that. So stay tuned for that soon because I'm really excited to get working on those. But I love this paper pack so much that I just had to do this one next. If you're new to my channel and you haven't yet subscribed, then I invite you to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another scrapbooking video from me. And whether you're new or you've been around here for a while, please hit that thumbs up so that YouTube knows that you're enjoying this video and it will reach more people. Thanks so much. I really appreciate all of your support. So here I am breaking this into more pieces and I'm realizing at this point that I like just a little bit of that purpley color sticking out. So I'm going to tuck them under further and break them into smaller pieces so that it's not as prominent. I liked it in just small doses, otherwise it was sort of taking away from the photos. Now I know I said I wasn't gonna do black splatters, but it just felt too empty to me having all that white space. So I'm not going overboard. I kept telling myself just a little bit, just a little bit. I just wanted that tiny little bit of splatter. And I think I accomplished that. But the other thing I told myself was to step away, let it dry, don't let it smear. But what did I do? I smeared it in a couple places, but don't worry, I am going to conspicuously place some embellishments so you're never going to know. I found this little die cut in the Labels Ephemera pack, and I thought if I cut off the top, I can use it kind of as a little banner element on my journaling box. I found a sticker in my stash that says Together, and then I found this stamp that says Family Time, and not only would that not fit, but I didn't want family because it was just my husband and me. Um, so I just am masking it off. So I've got some post-it tape that I covered family with, and then I'm going to stamp it in my black ink, kind of staying to the top so I don't cover the whole mask, but um, I'm gonna peel that mask off so it doesn't matter too much. So get it nice and inky, peel it off, and then I'm going to stamp it where I want on that label, making sure it's not too high since I'm trimming the top off. 
I got it a little bit crooked, but that's okay. It's still workable. And I'm gonna put this together sticker offset just a little bit. I like how that looks. And then it brings in a little bit more of that pop of black that we've been doing. I think it looks good right here. And I still need to add my journaling, but speaking of pops of black, I thought if we could add just a little bit more black. I had these little paperboard pieces from close to my heart and there's lots of little pieces that would work well lots of flowers and even a couple of butterflies which of course play well into that photo over on the left so i'm just tucking them in because i just barely want those little pops i don't want them to be um, too you know standing out too much i just want them as little accents and in fact that big butterfly was even too much so i'm going to take that away and just leave the little one I also added a few of the iridescent foil gems off camera. Here's what they look like. I'm really trying to catch the light on them because they're so, so pretty. There's like iridescent foil flecks plus glittery flecks in gold and they're so pretty. So a couple of these that I'm pointing out are covering up smears from the splatter that I did and the butterfly is covering up a little smear as well. So I hope that you enjoyed this and be sure to check out the rest of the creative design team and the projects they have done from this sketchbook. That playlist is on the right. And if you'd like to see another layout I made recently, check out the video on the left. Have a great day.